Right, this is more of a little information video, just in case anyone else has got one of these older Haas machines. Uh, this is a vector drive machine, 20 horsepower vector drive. Um, bit of an information video for anyone who might have had the same issue that I've had and just fixed. Um, well, I say that about three or four weeks ago, but I've not had time to do the video. So we're gonna jump back and forward to a few clips. The machine's currently good and working. It's just turned off at the minute. Um, the issue was, when I was running the machine in various spindle RPM, the, it almost sounded like the bearings were starting to wear on the machine. It was um, fluctuating in RPM, which normally people say it should be literally one RPM up or down and that's it. They're normally very accurate with how they sit. Mine was going sort of anywhere 10, 15 RPM bouncing. The load meter on the machine with the spindle um, running and cutting fresh air, I was anywhere from 10 to 35% spindle load. Now, normally, even taking a decent sized cut, I probably wouldn't be at 35% in the alley and little pieces that I do. So running 35% load in fresh air was a bit strange. With the needle bouncing, um, with the load, the RPM fluctuation, and the noise of the spindle, although when you turn the spindle by hand, you couldn't feel any play or movement, and it felt good. It sounded like the bearings were bad. Done a bit of investigating uh, to try and see what happened, and then this happened. So I'll show you the footage now. See there, we're getting spindle load. 25 to 30%. It's a 3.8. 3.6, you can hear it quite a lot. And the RPM is bouncing. Sure that's where it swaps over for the wire. I dealt on the motor because you can hear the contact to go. Contact to back out. Right, so that bit of footage is showing you the problem that I was having with the RPM fluctuation, the load meter showing 10, 20, 30 percent load with the tool cut in the fresh air. Um, couldn't work out what it was. Carried on doing what I was doing. Just kind of, if I can't figure it out, I've got to live with it. It's one of them things. And then this happened. Just started. Can't read that. Spindle drive fault. Failure of spindle drive motor or regen load. This can be caused by short, shorted motor, over voltage, over current, under voltage, failure of drive, shorted or open regen load, under voltage and over voltage of DC bus are also reported as alarms 160 and 119 respectively. It's the first time this ever happened today. To be fair, that motor hasn't sounded good today. And we've got a regen fault. Power fault. They're just normal LEDs. 
No faults on the drives. Got a flashing one down here. Oh, that's for the red beacon. Sure, what that one is. It's the probe. No other lights. So it looks like this is the problem. Oh dear. Okay, so I took the vector drive out of the machine and Weird things happening in the machine. The spindle didn't sound too great, although it turns freely now it's powered off by hand, but it was showing 25% load on the spindle when it was just running at a thousand RPM. But when you spin it now, if I show you quick, the machine's powered down and I can't raise the head, but that seems fine but we were showing 25 to 30% load on here. Um, when it alarmed out, one, two, three, spindle drive fault. I turned it off, um, had a look at this first. It said regen fault and fault of the power. I turned it back on, run the spindle, and then there was a pop. And now we've got that burnt up on the board. They look a little bit black around there. And then, Guessing that's what went pop. Try and get a better bit of footage. The cap inside has got a hole in it now. I don't know if this can be repaired or whether I've got to speak to Hass and sit down for a new price. So after the failure, the drive went down. You could clearly see burnt components on the vector drive. Now I've got no idea about anything like that. I wouldn't know where to start. So phoned up um, a CNC repair specialist who's been doing it for a long, 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 long time. Asked him if he knew anyone in the UK that dealt with Hass vector drives because they're not so common in the UK like they are in the US. Everyone in the US seems to repair them. Not many people in the UK do so. Uh, he said he's dealt with a few of them over the years himself bring it along, he'll have a look, see what he can do. So, took up to see him, drove it out there, got in the truck, drove the hour, went to see him, he had a look, tested a few bits and pieces, said, right, I'll replace what I can see once I've got it opened up, anything else I can see, we'll replace, we'll try. Very fair price. Um, and also he worked on the basis that if he couldn't repair it, I only paid for the components that were soldered to the thing that it can't obviously be reused, uh, but I don't pay the labor cost. Can't say fairer than that. Let him have the drive. Waited a week or two for a couple of genuine parts to um, little chips and IGBTs and stuff. Rather than getting uh, generic sort of versions, we'll wait for the, the proper component that matched that was already on the board from the same manufacturer spec. And uh, we got it back, we put it in the machine. Right, so the drive is back in. Let me grab the torch. Just show you it reinstalled, nothing exciting, but so there's the drive back inside the cabinet. The boards are back in, everything's plumbed in exactly how it was. So all we've got left to do now really is actually turn it on see this is where the machine died in this position I'll leave that cover off um, because I've got to put the chip guards back on for the Z because I took them off to see if I could turn the screw to get the head up um, 
but I couldn't. So I'm guessing somehow, somewhere along the line, it's braked. So there's nothing disconnected other than the fan for the motor, but obviously the motor's not really gonna be running. My only concern is if I have to zero the machine, the spindle is pretty much, it's not touching the workpiece, but I'm guessing as usual, it should always go home first. Fingers crossed, moment of truth. Now the other thing I wanna jump in here and just say in the middle of this little bit of footage is that the reason the top cover was off of here is that I don't know why the vector drive blew and burnt out what it burnt out. I have no idea. Whether it was to do with the fluctuating spindle load, um, which we get down the line, we'll look at the next issue um, that's in the video. But while it was all apart, I bought a cheap mega meter off of Amazon for sort of, guys, literally like 40 quid, I think. The leads that come with it, the test leads, utter crap, barely stay together. I bought a set of leads for 25 quid, nearly the price of the megameter. And while I was there, I pulled this cover off and I disconnected. Because this motor's wired for Y and Delta, so there's like 12 sets or 12 wires, four sets of, of whatever. Um, I done a mega test on every single set of windings. Um, I didn't do any footage of that, but I got the readings, the readings were good. So I megged the motor windings. I'd done um, the resistance test, like with a thousand volt on the mega meter resistance test. I done a resistance test in general across the pairs of windings and with the cable from the motor to the board and everything in that sense to check it was all good. So. I also tested the resistance on the regen um, for the vector drive. Everything that Hass sort of said to check, I checked it. Luckily, it was all good and it was worth doing because what I didn't want to do was spend the money on the repair of the vector drive, put it back in the machine, turn it on, hit spindle go, and just boom, vector drive gone again, which is what I've read and heard. And that was one of my biggest fears is that the vector drive is going to be repaired and pop straight away. So. If you have the issue, while you're there, buy a mega meter, borrow a mega meter, or get an electrician in and get all the rest of it checked so you know you're not going to do any damage to what you've just paid to have repaired. So far, so good. Now we've got the emergency off. Do that, cycle the door. Now I should be able to reset both the Liams. Now I'm not sure I can't jog the Z because I'm not zeroed. So if I Power up restart and get ready on the emergency stop. So far, so good. We've got the head up in the air at least. Right, so that is everything as should be. Well, we're back in and we are running. Just got it running. Just on MDI at the minute. Obviously not run a program yet. Spindle's not been warmed up for a few days. But, um, 1000 RPM. We've got no errors at the moment. Everything seems to sound all right, same 
noise from the belts or maybe old bearings or whatever that it had before, but so far, so good. I know everyone says about checking the DC bus. That's 335 volts, which I'm pretty sure is what it should be. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let it run for about half hour and then I might let it do a full 20 minute warm up, which takes it up to the full 7,500 RPM. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so as you can see for that bit of the video, the Vector Drive is reinstalled and we are up and running. So we haven't got any spindle drive errors anymore, which is good. So as far as I can tell, that part of the problem is solved. But I have another issue, which is the RPM hunting up and down, the load meter on the machine showing anywhere from sort of five, 10, 15, 25, up to 30% load when I'm cutting fresh air. Also, there's a sound from the spindle. It's kind of wah, 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 wah. It's not smooth. Um, thought possibly bearings but it seems not so if you watch this next part of the video you'll see what that noise come from and how i fixed it I'm trying to rectify noise that i'm not sure if it's bad bearings or not but you can hear the spindle and the motor it sounds quite good it's a seven half thousand rpm spindle running at a six spindle load there now as I turn it down, five thousand still sounds good. Down to four thousand. You can hear it start to hum. At 3.8, spindle load is up. And you can hear it hunting. See there, we're getting spindle load. 25 to 30%. That's a 3.8. 3 6, you can hear it quite a lot. And the RPM is bouncing. Pretty sure that's where it swaps over to the wire. Or delta on the motor because you can hear the contact to go. Contact to back out. And again, all sounds good, but it's got that RPM range where it doesn't sound so good. between three and a half see at four it drops off again at 
348 will back up. to know why that's bouncing. Anyone with an older style Hass, we've got a Suntec encoder, and this is still relatively new built. The old one was really loose, and this one is also extremely loose. Getting a lot of noise up here. That is held solid with the Clamps there just so it can't turn. This belt is just sloppy. I'm guessing this shouldn't be nowhere near that loose. I'm flapping around. I can pretty much, if I want to, I can slide that belt off with my hand. I'm guessing maybe this is worn and the pulley on there is worn. Okay, so we've just took this complete bracket off, cleaned it up, it's compressor, perfect timing. Clean this bracket right up. These four holes are only big enough for these four bolts. There's no adjustment like on a new machine where it's spring loaded to keep tension. So I took it off crudely, but knowingly elongated these four holes, refitted everything. These were locked off so they couldn't move. Pulled the bracket back. So now you see the belt. The belt is now got a little bit of movement, but it's 10 times tighter than it was. Refitted it, lock tight then back in place. And now we're running the same as before. We'll just start it off at a thousand. Nice and quiet with no load. And then if we jump on the spindle there, so that is currently at a thousand. Ramp it up to two. Ramps up to three. This is where it was really bad before. Perfect. Sounds 10 times better. Only one RPM fluctuation and the spindle load is nice and low. That should be. For now, problem solved. Okay, so there's the video. Now, what I'm not 100% sure of, if it's the initial, is or was the initial noise of the spindle hunting, the RPM hunting, to do with the vector drive that went pop initially. Was it putting some sort of undue load and the hunting keep on at the vector drive? Was that struggling to keep everything in control and caused it to pop? Or is it a separate issue? But um, obviously the vector drive's repaired. That's been about four weeks ago now. So that's been going good. It's run at all sorts of spindle speeds, long and short programs. And the machine is quiet. We don't get any spindle load now. So if you've got spindle load issues or you've got hunting issues or it sounds a little bit rough, just check the tightness of the belt. 
And on the older machine, worst case, either replace the pulleys, which I got a price for about £475, I think, for two pulleys and a belt. And then I could have replaced them, but the motor one's meant to be quite difficult to get off. So as I did for the option, it's not the best fix. Ideally, replacing the belts and the pulleys would be the way forward, is take the top bracket off, elongate the holes, and then slide the entire thing back just so it's snug as you tighten it up. If you're gonna do that, make sure you don't lose the position of your encoder. Lock it up somehow. I used pliers to make sure it couldn't move. A um, Little bit more awkward to work around, but it done the job. Didn't have to redo the spindle orientation or tool change position, because um, that's all it was. So yeah, that's my fix. That's how I quieten this problem down. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps you out. Cheers for watching.